pencil dots and the stripes and the, the filling, the back, the layering of, of pattern and color texture is something that ends up working its way into most of my paintings using either using the wood grain that's in the wood or uh, something that I started doing a few years back was uh, doing hand painted wood grain. Uh, there's some tools you can use okay. for like, you know, uh, people use it in faux finishing or uh, sometimes people use it on, it's kind of the way that some fake dash wood in old cars okay. was made, yeah. that sort of thing. And uh, that, that, those elements have sort of stayed with me. Um, the subject matters, maybe what changes, um, but I guess, I guess what I'm saying is I, I keep experimenting with different styles, um, and slowly bits of them are staying with me. I think I'm getting closer and closer to, to achieving your something style. that's right, something that's that's mine, and and I'm. Not, not intentionally emulating other people, but I'm also not afraid to um, not do something because I've seen it elsewhere. Right. You know, I think that um, you know when I'm when I'm drawing or sketching, I like I've always liked one example is just like crown, like a king's crown. That that imagery um, I think is really cool. It's hard not to do it and have people think of uh, Basquiat because he was doing a okay. lot of drawing crowns in his paintings. Um, but um, there's nothing, I mean, everything. everything's derivative and I think that you can't uh, pretend that it isn't. Um, um, I guess that's also interesting to me also is Printmaking versus kind of that the, the idea of originality and and artwork also like these these uh, samurai dudes. It's the 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 line art is exactly the same in every one because I'm using a stencil that was cut by a computer. Um, but it's about the same as if somebody used a photographic process to make a silk screen, right. screen, it, screen printed the silk screen, or carved a woodblock print and printed that. Um, but it's always interesting to me where people draw their line as far as what's original and what's not, right. because there's multiples in a, a block print but somebody car drew the picture and carved the block right. and hand printed it. Um, a silk screen can be mechanically printed or hand printed, but you can't tell one from the other when you're looking at the final product. Um, it's still an actual screen print. Um, I've had people um, I've had people say that I should, like, I've definitely in the past have, for large pieces, have used a projector to map out the basic, okay. the basic layout, usually based on an image that I drew myself, and it saves me a lot of time. I've had, um, I've lost, uh, you know, lost battery. Um, like one time I was going to project from my laptop and my battery, I didn't bring a power strip with me and the battery died. And I had just enough time to print the image out. And I just drew it from lo looking at the picture. So it's not that I, I can't draw it large. Right. It just saves me a lot of time. But I've had people say, oh, you shouldn't tell anyone that you projected that. Like it's cheating. <laughs> and But I drew it little first. Well, and that, I, 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 um, I just bought this book. Um, I've been trying to find it for a long time. I finally 
I found a copy on Amazon and it was like on back order for six months. And it's a David Hockney book called uh, Secret Knowledge, uh, Secrets of the Old Masters. And um, Vermeer and a lot of other artists use uh, lenses and means of projection yeah. and grids and reflective mirrors and all kinds of tricks to, to make their artwork. And a lot of people don't want to admit that. Right. But it's, they're just tools. Just like um, Photoshop is a tool and making things in Photoshop is, in my mind, not different than the drawing it because you're still making it with your idea in your hands um, but um, yeah I guess you gotta make your, your own yeah line right and not let other right. people make that for right. you right I think my line is um, is just at the point where I distinguish between a, a print and a reproduction. So like if you if you hand pulled it, then it's a print and it's totally legit for you to number it and call it limited edition. But if it's a reproduction that I inkjet printed and I call, it, I call it a G clay, which is just as an inkjet print, that's that's totally fair. Call it a reproduction and price it as such, but um, the doing a limited number of those things and calling it a print um, is, um, I guess what I don't like about that is it's not really handmade and it's um, just made, it's just for the sake of commodity. Um, which is, I mean, it's good. It's good for people to have reproductions of their artwork. Um, but I just don't think of it as an original. Right. Um, I think it's I, part of part of that s strong opinion about that comes from also years as a picture framer and uh, the whole Thomas Kincaid thing. I don't know if you talk Thomas Kincaid. He's the guy, the painter of life. Thomas Kincaid is the painter of life. Okay. <laughs> he, it's a uh, cute cottages and stone bridges and happy meadows. Okay. Uh, not too far off from Bob Ross style, but people collect it. Like people pay thousands of dollars for paintings that are sold as limited numbers or originals, but they are. Um, basically posters that are affixed to canvas and then there's high school kids touching them up with real paint and then they get a hand brushed on clear coat that makes them look like kind of they're hand painted and then the artist would sign it and then it's so there's this whole range of like there's prints and then there's prints on canvas and then there's touched up canvases and none of them are the actual painting that he made they're all reproductions but uh, people buy and sell them like like they're trading bonds and stuff wow yeah um, yeah it's it's weird that's a weird that's a weird scene to me um, so um, I, I got off track at some point talking about, um, you know, talking about variations on things, but um, I have, uh, like, this, this Samurai series is, um, I would look at, um, look at Samurai books that are uh, prints that were done in the 1800s and just do sketches of the same, same, uh, you know, the same pose a couple of times. So when I get one that I like, I would ink it and make some changes. And then, uh, you know, 
work that up on the computer, drawing with the Wacom tablet, digital pen, right and that gives me the vector file that I would turn into the stencils that I use on these. And the end result is a notice noticeably different style, but it's also originating from inspiration from somebody else's artwork. Right. So once again, you know, did I change it enough to make it my own? Did I, um, you know, uh, it's not a contemporary artist, but it's a, um, it's, it's still like most of these, at least these, the three, the, the 12 by 8 themes are the, in the books that um, I looked at, they were even um, records of specific Ronin or Samurai oh, right. that have lived, which is a cool thing about a lot of, a lot of the books, there's, um, in the print, there's text that tells you about that particular samurai, um, which the book I have, it's not all translated. Other than I know uh, this guy up here and that guy over there are two of the Roman that were in the uh, siege that was made into the movie 47 Roman. Okay. Yeah. Um, and in, in some of my online posts, I, I named the original artist and the Samurai movies are. Um, and uh, yeah, so I returned, you know, I was talking about returning to block printing. I'd like to do more of that. And I think it's a good way to, um, it's a good way to have artwork that anybody can afford uh, or more people can afford. You right. know, it's, it's tricky because. Um, artists need to get paid, but also we want everybody to have it too. Yeah. So um, making making prints is, is nice. I like having, um, it's really satisfying also. It takes a long time to carve something and then when you're thinking and blocking and suddenly just like 20 pieces, 25 pieces, 30 pieces are stacking up, it's, it's rewarding. Um, and uh, the, um, I guess I'll kind of step forward to you were asking me about kind of what plans I have. Yeah. Um, uh, at the beginning, I talked about how when I was first um, when I was first doing artwork, um, my mom was folding over uh, notebook paper and making booklets. Um, that's sort of that's sort of what I'm coming back to now is thinking about uh, illustration, like stories, like what. What sort of um, narratives can I bring to it? That's why I like I like the samurai because um, even in a very subtle way, there's a narrative to the images. Um, especially the guy um, back over this way that has um, an arrow in his arm. Okay. I like that. Um, you know, it's a it's a moment. Uh, in, a, in a battle, right. um, but I li I'm, I'm thinking even more narrative, and really ultimately I would love to do some uh, graphic novel type work, and um, some of, some of this, just doing more pen and ink drawing, and um, working on backgrounds, I'm, sort of my goal is to sort of uh, get my chops up for for